Yo, what's going on everyone? I am Mr. Former Simpson. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. If you enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. We do three videos a week, so make sure you are tuned in. But today, today we are talking about the best sneakers of 2016. 2016 is coming to an end, so you know it is that time. Now, what we're gonna do with this list, in the past I've done like top 13 of 2013, but I don't wanna do 16 sneakers, it's too many. It doesn't force me to really make cuts and make tough decisions. I thought about doing five sneakers, but I was like, that's not quite enough. So 10 is the number, 10 is the sweet spot. Also in the past, I've done lists where it's just sneakers that I've picked up. I don't want to do that because some of my favorite releases this year I actually missed on. So this is the best 10 sneakers to release in 2016. Let's get it on. Number 10, the Kith and Adidas Ultra Boost Mid. Obviously, Adidas had a great year this year. The Ultra Boost, I mean, Ultra Boost is, if, if you watch this channel, you know I love Ultra Boost. It's a brand new silhouette. It's the first ever Ultra Boost mid, and Ronnie Feig did what Ronnie Feig does. He absolutely bodied it with the multicolor. The whole thing is just absolutely awesome. Number nine, the Sneaker Freaker and New Balance 997.5 Tassie Tiger, an amazing, amazing sneaker. I'm a huge fan of Sneaker Freaker. I feel like every collab they do, everything they touch is pretty much gold. I loved the Tassie Devil that they did a few years ago, the purple and black joints, and they followed it up perfectly with these. This colorway is just absolutely money. And I know New Balance hype is a little bit down, and even myself, I haven't been buying New Balance like I was a couple years ago. I just don't think they're putting out the dope releases as consistently as they were then. But this shoe has to be on this list and this shoe is just perfection. Number eight, the Nike Air Max 97 Silver Bullet. Let me just start off by saying the 97 model is super slept on, super underrated. I mean, everyone loves the Air Max 1 and the Air Max 90 and the 95, but the 97 does not get the respect it deserves. And this colorway in particular is classic. I mean, this colorway right here, the silver bullet is immaculate. They released in Italy a few months ago, a little while back. They had the Italian flag detailing, but they only released in Italy, I believe. They just recently, just in the nick of time, just before time ran out, they released over here the classic silver bullet colorway, and it just does not get too much better than this. Number seven, the Jordan 1 Satin. Obviously, the bread one is, I mean, that is, that's history, you know? And I know that they just re-released the leather pair this year as well, but a couple years ago, they released also, so it's tough for me to put that pair back on the list again. As much as I love that shoe, it's one of my favorite Jordans of all time. And yes, the pair that released this year had much better leather quality than the pair from 2013 or whenever it was. But nonetheless, it's the same sneaker. I love the fact that they took that classic colorway and that classic model and gave it the most luxurious of treatments with the satin material. Silky, silky fresh. Number six, the Adidas Ultra Boost 3.0 in the burgundy colorway. Like I said, I love Boost. Boost is life. And this was such a great year for Adidas. I mean, they had a great year last year, but they've just really been riding the wave. They've been doing a great job. And the 3.0 is just the next sneaker on that wave. It's just the next sneaker in that line of amazing sneakers. And burgundy is my favorite colorway uh, by far. And I think it works 
perfectly on this particular silhouette. This is a sneaker that I'm still after. I still need to get a pair of these, maybe even two pairs, because Boost is that good. L let me just tell you something. If you haven't worn Boost, which most people by now have, but if you haven't worn Boost, it's really tough to wear Boost and then go back to anything else on a daily basis. It's that comfortable, it feels that good on your foot, and it looks that good. So, I mean, this is just a phenomenal sneaker and tip of the cap to Adidas. Number five, the Jordan 11 Space Jam. You don't really need to say anything other than those two words, Space Jam. Muy fuego, muy fuego. It's one of my favorite Jordans of all time. Honestly, it kind of seesaws back and forth between the Bread 11 and the Space Jam 11. The 11 is my favorite model, and those two colorways, they just mean a lot to me. When those released in 2001, or I should say re-released, obviously they came out before then, but that was right when I was getting into sneakers and the Jordan 11 was just like mind-blowing. And I've been waiting for the Space Jam for a very, very long time. I missed the pair that came out in 2009. I was over in Germany, I was playing basketball. I had a lot going on and I did not get a pair. So I've been waiting for a pair of these since 2001. It's not like the Bread Ones or the White Cement Fours that recently came out. I have been waiting for these for quite some time. Number four, the acronym Nike Air Presto Mid. Just a really, really cool sneaker. It was really cool how they did it and how they released. It was super quiet. It felt like a much more old school release where no one really had much info. No one really kind of saw it coming too much and then bam, it was there. At least for me, it was like, oh, whoa. And they released in a couple different colorways, but this colorway right here is just an absolute neck breaker. I love everything about it. I love how it's a different looking silhouette. And another thing too is the Presto, and it's one of the reasons I like it, the Presto is really, really comfortable. And that does matter. You know, like that's one of my things with the Jordan Retros is they're just not that comfortable, especially compared to other sneakers. So if you're gonna wear it, if you're gonna wear a sneaker all day, or it's something you wanna wear on a daily basis, Comfy Boys has to be in effect. And so when you take a sneaker that is Comfy Boys and absolutely fire in a, in a crazy colorway and a crazy silhouette, I mean, it's tough to beat that. This collaboration is just a home run. I mean, this is Barry Bond status right here. This collaboration is A1. Number three, the Nike Air Force One Low Linen. I don't really, I mean, for those, I just recently did a video on this shoe. For those of you who saw that, you know how excited I was, I am. I've probably worn the shoe six times in the past two weeks. I mean, they are that dope to me. To me, this is the best Air Force One colorway of all time. I mean, of course you have the white on whites, the uptowns, that's almost in a league of its own, but the linen is so, so dope and they were so unobtainable for me and for a lot of people for so many years. So for Nike and Kith and Ronnie to come together and re-release them, I mean, I was like a kid in a candy store. That's how excited I was to get them. And I've always been more of an Air Force One mid kind of guy, but there's just something about this colorway. There's something about this shoe that just does it for me. And obviously Air Force Ones have made a pretty good comeback um, this year and recently. You had the Special Forces and you know they've done some cool stuff, but nothing is touching the linens, nothing. Number two, the Bape Adidas NMD. It's disgusting how dope these are. I mean, it's almost like you almost have to, you know, you have fresh and dope and amazing. You almost have to come full circle. These are disgusting. These are, these are yucky. That's how dope these are. I've already mentioned that Adidas has had a monster year. You guys don't need me to tell you that. You see it too. And the Ultra Boost, the Ultra Boost changed the game. Let's face it, the Ultra Boost and that Boost technology is just, I mean, forget about it. But I really think the Ultra Boost 
we've been on that now for a little while. This was really the year that the NMD flourished. I mean, you had the pitch black pair, you had the, the red apples. There was a lot of really cool NMDs. And unfortunately, some of the coolest ones were the most limited and the hardest to get. Um, but that's the nature of the beast sometimes. The Bape colorway, the Bape collab is my favorite NMD of the year and the best Adidas of the year. I know that's super hype beastie, but I really don't care. When I saw that sneaker, I was like Doc in Back to the Future. My hair was like, whew. it was, I looked like I just got electrocuted. Like that's how fire they are. The NMD, obviously a great model, a great silhouette. And then just that Bape camo just works perfectly on it. Body bags, that, that's it, body bags. Number one, numero uno, top dog. The Nike Air more up tempo in the black colorway. Moment of silence for these right here, moment of silence. This shoe is Tinker Hatfield at his very best. This shoe, this shoe is basically my childhood in New Buck, and glue and air form. Like if you could put my childhood using those materials and things, put them together, it would be this shoe. The air bubble always captivated me. I, I To this day, I can remember when I saw that Air Max air bubble, it was just, it was life-changing. It was like, oh my God, it, it, it was just so dope. And with this shoe, you had the air bubble that went all the way around and then it said air in those like very cool letters on the side. It was, as a little kid, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, wow. Like it doesn't get more Nike air than that. We had the air bubble, now we have air on the side. It was just the perfect combination. It was the perfect design. And it's a sneaker that I wore a ton in my life. So. You know, and it's really tough when you do these lists because it's like, man, you know, you ask me on another day and, and things could be different, but how I, you know, a lot of these could change, you know, three could be five, seven could be four, I, things can switch around. But for number one, I just had to ask myself, if I could have one sneaker on this list, if everything was gone and I could only take one sneaker from this list, what would it be? And easy, no brainer, Nike Air, more up tempo. Heavenly. And there you have it, the top 10 sneakers to release in 2016. Obviously, this is just my list, my opinions, and what I think is dope. Let me know what you think. Let me know what is the best sneaker to release. No, you know what? Forget about that because that's gonna be too easy. I'm gonna make you, you gotta make some decisions. You gotta make some cuts here. Leave a comment below and let me know the top three sneakers to release this year. Your three favorite sneakers from 2016, whether you were able to cop them or not cop them. Don't limit yourself to that. The three best releases of 2016, let me know in the comments below. Always love to hear from you and especially on something like this, I definitely wanna get some conversation back and forth and I wanna hear what you guys and girls have to say. Thank you for watching though. I appreciate you as always. More videos coming soon, so stay tuned. In the meantime, between time, you can find me on social media, Twitter, where I just kind of tweet random stuff, sports, food, whatever's going on at the particular time. Um, Instagram, if you wanna see on feet pictures or just really detailed pictures of what I'm picking up. And then Snapchat is where I show all the early looks when I get something in, right when I take it out of the box, before we do a YouTube video, before it's on Instagram or Twitter, it's on Snapchat. So Snapchat is like, that's the real time sneaker stuff. You know, you can see stuff kind of as it comes in. So all those links will be in the description. Not too much else. Until next time, Mr. Fomer Simpson, I'm out. If you like sneakers and dope shit, subscribe to the channel. We do at least three videos a week you won't be disappointed.